Hello all, welcome to another episode of Hidden Gems with me, your host Natasha Parker. I am so happy to be here with you guys and share this time and space Um, because we're just, you know, our little community is just budding and growing. So thank you very much. Um, Today, I'm excited because we have a very special guest on. Um, Her name is Sydney Washington and she is hilarious and I actually found her because a friend of mine took a video that she did and sent it to me about dogs and it was hilarious and that's how I found her Uh, and the overview of this episode is going to be laughter is good for the soul because she is a comedian and I don't think we laugh enough and everyone's so serious all the time and we need both so Sydney welcome to Hidden Gems. Oh my god Natasha (laughs) thank you so much I'm so I I absolutely remember when you reposted that and and then I saw your picture and I'm like Oh my, of course a cute girl with a cute dog <laughs> It loves the joke. I said, uh, we. I have to follow back. Yes. <laughs> we yes. have to follow back immediately. So thank you for enjoying that. Yes, yeah. so I love my guests to introduce themselves mm-hmm. to the Hidden Gems community. So intro yourself, darling, your camera's right there. Okay, I am <laughs> Sydney Washington. I'm a comedian. I am an actress. I'm a writer. I'm a sister, a lover, friend. I'm exhausted. Uh, I've, I've been doing comedy for like uh, over 10 years now. And I, I think I'm finally hitting my stride. And I am New York City uh, person first, and then everything else comes. I'm New York City. I ripped that hard. So yes, I need everybody to know that. <laughs> so you were born here? I was born here. OK. Uh, where? Uh, in uh, in Harlem. Mm-hmm. So born on New York soil, uh, <laughs> lived here for two years. Then I moved to California. Just I did a little, I did a I did a bid in yep. California mm-hmm. from two to thirteen, and then I came back. Oh. but that's the most important. Like thirteen on is when you really become a New Yorker. Yeah, and when you're you who you are, who you are. Yeah, right. and I was I was in New York during the like most important times. Obviously. 9-11 and everything else amongst that and it's I, I'm I feel like I am New York yes New York is in me yes and mm-hmm. you were just recently though in LA right I was I went back to the scene of the crime <laughs> and, and I went there for a year and a half and I realized that LA is for a very specific person mm-hmm. that is not me mm-hmm. that's not me at all um, and what kind of person are we talking? Like, what about it? What about, because I love the LA, New York talk because I also lived in both. Okay. And I think a lot of people want to make the jump to maybe one or the other all the time, especially mm-hmm. creatives. So uh, let's get into it. What is the differences for you? The difference is you could be in New York, uh, not have anything going on, and then it comes, the stuff comes. You're go- just by doing and being, mm-hmm. the the jobs, the people, the community, it's all going to come. Mm-hmm. L.A., you actually have to have a plan. Yes. You literally have to go there. I actually suggest going to L.A., some, something already set up. Already having a job, already at least knowing a few people, mm-hmm. knowing where you're going to live, also drive, like, to drive, to get in the car. A lot of people don't even know how to walk straight. And then you want them to get behind a wheel and then be off their phone and then know, like know how to um, signal and stuff. That's not happening, not yeah. in LA. Not, Do you drive? Like, no, <laughs> why would I? I I constantly are st- is stumbling. I'm falling up the stairs. You don't want me behind a wheel, absolutely. I'm truly shaky, shaky hands. I can't even play Mario Kart with like confidence. So I'm, there's no way, there's no way I'm getting behind a wheel. Yeah, you're I like, I should. No. I should, but I can't. Mm. I can't. I'm a passenger princess. Yeah. Okay. Drive me. I love that. <laughs> Drive me there. Drive me there. Pick me up. And I won't even tell you what to do. I'm not one of those like uh, passengers that's like telling you what to do. I'm there. I'm, I'm in my own world. The backseat driver. I'm, I'm, I'm on the right. phone. I'm playing the music. I'm eating something. You don't have to worry about it. I'm asleep. Yeah. I'm the perfect, perfect passenger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think with LA, what's interesting is if you don't have a plan, because it's, you know, what is that song? Pussy Money Trees. Mm-hmm. Yes, amen. <laughs> because there's so much temptation. So much. There's so much sunshine. There's so many other things that you can kind of get into in L.A. If you do go there and you're not like, I'm going to do this. I have to do this. You know, I'm focused on this trajectory thing. Mm-hmm. I think it can get a little dangerous for some people, for sure. Um, I moved to L.A., and I did not, I mean, I for had- For how long? For how long? When did you go? I went in 2000. Why did you go? I went because I wanted to work in television. I wanted okay. to be a producer and writer. That's everybody. Yep. 
Everybody yep. there. Yep. And doing then, the same thing. And then uh, it, they, that's what my teacher said. They yeah. were like, girl, you want to work in this business, you got to go to New York or L.A. Mm -hmm. You need to go to, you know, L.A. preferably. Yeah. But, um, and, and then I went and I said, okay, uh, I was there for four years. I started working. I worked at Paramount. I did the whole thing, blah, blah, okay. blah. But I had a, my cousin, my cousin's aunt on her mom's side. Okay. And it was like my, my uncle's uh, daughter. But she was like the only person that I knew there. Okay. Uh, Brenda, may she rest in peace. Um, and... But, like, she was the only person I knew there. And we weren't close. Like, I knew her, you know, and things like that, but we weren't close. And then I had a friend's sister who lived there, who mm. I lived with, and there was, like, five of us living in a two-bedroom apartment. No way. Yeah, it was crazy. This, it was, oh, the youth. The youth oh, the will youth. find a way. Mm -hmm. They will find a way to just just fit, like, sardines. And figure and, it out. In the house. Yeah. And make it work. Yeah. And make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and I was going out every single night. Okay. I was working seven days a week. I had an internship at Paramount. I was working at Burberry. I, da, 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 da. I was doing all this stuff, going back and forth, back and forth. But what I realized was I was always doing something. Yeah. And because I am a very social person. You seem like a yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, 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 like, met people. And, and I feel like the only way that I you know, quote unquote, made it or was able to do things out there was because I was very, it was very important for me to be like, okay, who's the person I need to talk to in this room? You know yes, what I mean? you have to, you have, first of all, you, and I see this, I, you seem very focused. Mm -hmm. You seem like you have like, like you're very plan and goal oriented. Yes. And um, if you have ADHD and you're kind of aloof <laughs> and you're like, let's see what the vibes is giving. Right. No, that is yes. not, that's not LA at all. Yeah. Like you can aimlessly walk out in New York and oh. things happen yes. and you feel cool yes. in LA. You cannot do that. No. If you walk outside and you don't know what you're doing for the day, people are like, are you okay? Are you on house? Do you need $5? Like, yeah. it's not cool. It's not cool at all. You have to know. And you have to plan in advance. Yes. You have to plan. Go, come into somebody like a day before, like, hey, you want to hang out tomorrow? They're like, what? No, it can't happen. No, 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 no. I, I'll, I, maybe I could get you in next week. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And people love staying home there. They yes. love, they, they spend all these money on these homes. They got cars. They got And everything's so spread out. It's so spread out. They're just like, hmm, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Let me work it. Like, they just <laughs> don't feel like, they don't feel compelled. Yeah. It's not, they're not pressed. Yeah. They're pressed, panini pressed for other things. But I think like going for out for, for just for like friendship, I don't really see that. Yeah. happening there so that was yeah. not for me at all yeah mm -hmm. yeah i see that it, i mean it is a different place and i think you know people who love la would say that new york is too pressed <laughs> new york is too wild mm -hmm. i can't control the situation because i walk outside and this is happening this is happening that is yeah. happening. so it's like you either welcome the like wild unknownness of it all yeah which I do love New York for that. I'm chaotic. Mm -hmm. I have to. Like I need I love the uncertainty and I love just being like you never you literally never know. But you just New York, don't know. New York holds you mm -hmm. for that, right? Like you don't you are definitely not the most chaotic person here. You no, I'm I mean? not. No, no, that's why no, I feel exactly. like I can sleep at night and know <laughs> that hey, whenever I feel like Girl, you are so unhinged. Nope, I'm gonna get on a six train. There's gonna be somebody way more. Like, no, no, yeah. no, yeah. no, no. Hey, boo, but no. And yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah. walk into Target. Somebody's gonna be going off. It's like, no, you're not. You're actually really chill. Exactly. You're a six. You're a six right now. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. Okay, so that is yes, mm -hmm. yes. I I agree with you on that. And for some people, you know, a six is like a sixteen in LA because it's so truly chill. Truly. It's, it's so too chill. chill. It's too chill. I don't. I don't even understand why people smoke so much weed there because it's so chill. I don't get. I truly. I was like, y'all need some upper. Y'all need to be up because nobody has a sense of urgency. Yeah, there is no sense of urgency. I mean, in the email, they want sense of urgency, but like hospitality wise, oh, were they taking any time? Yep. Like, oh, fast food is actually you'll get it. You'll get it when you get it. it what's the rush? It fa it's what's the rush food? That's what it is. Even with the traffic, it's like mm -hmm. you know you're about to get into a car for two oh, hours, and I two think, hours, and that is most of LA's personality is being in a car, yeah. being in a car, being confined. It's like yes, you have all this space, you have this home, but then you have to get in a little box and be stuck there and be on the highway for who knows when. 
Who knows how long? Yeah. Though. Yeah. So I get it. Mm-hmm. I get why you're like, I see what you are. Not for me. That's not for me. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now we came back. Yes. What was the, de- so why did we go there in the first place? What decision was it professionally? Was it personally? And then why did we come back? I literally went to LA for love. And uh, <sighs> thank you. Um, I, do I recommend? I don't know. <laughs> Three stars. Three stars. I, three stars in the sense that it was great love. I was happy to be in love. But again, like LA, you have to have a plan. You so can't. Bay lived there. Yeah. And, and you, she was doing well. She and, was doing well. And you lived here. I was doing well here in like everything that I was doing. I was doing very well here. I, I was like ascending. And so kind of like going to LA, you start over. Even if you are successful in New York, right? Unless you're already going to LA with a job, like a job is not just gonna going to appear. Mm-hmm. So it was like, and there's a different type of grinding with jobs there than it is here. It's all about who you know there. It's, it, who you know, but also like um, in New York, you, it, it's not all writer base. Um, mm. It's a lot of performance, a lot of live performances yes. here. Yes, yes. So a lot of people, I just like in, um, internally, like they're very talented, but sometimes not on paper in terms of like writing. Like they don't, they might not have a script yeah. or a pilot yeah. because they're just mainly performing or like even acting. So when I went to LA, I didn't have like a script i had i that's what I you needed ideas. i had idea ideas to pitch i had things that mm-hmm. uh one sheets and things of that sort but i had i didn't have something concrete to get me in a writer's room mm. which is uh, that for that field a writer's room is going to just hold you down and get your money together so then you get to the next thing you have all these connections mm-hmm. and know how a show is ran know how the people are in the industry and it, you do that for a like two, three years, it could jumpstart you to where you need to be. Right. But I had nothing. I and had... and where were we and where were we trying to be? I was a stand-up comedian yep. and stand-up comedy in LA is not, it's not, it's not stand-up comedy. Like it's stand-up comedy. I think, I think LA is a lot of people who are actors who are getting into stand-up, I but see. like they have not done the, in New York, it's just full on grind, open mics, like show, 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 right. show. Right. Put in a lot of hours to just be a stand up and, and to s- and to see people. Yeah, and, and to for see people. and for people to see you. Yes. Yeah. Now stand up is completely different. Like you put a joke online, you pop off, you get all these followers, then you're going on tour. Right. And when I was started comedy, you literally needed to go to all the open mics. You need to do, uh, somebody will see you, then you get on a bigger show, then yeah. you move that, then you do your own show, you like have a monthly or a weekly, and then that's how you ga- like, gauge of like, do you have a fan base? It wasn't an online thing at all. Right. It was, it was much, much harder to garner fans. You really had to do, the, just be out in the, in the field or like do the groundwork for it and now it's completely different but in that way social media is kind of helpful for your business right it is it is i do i do think it is helpful because now you'll have fans in japan you'll have fans in all these like cities that you you just wouldn't normally go to or get to go to Mm -hmm. so that's great but i think right now we're we're at a standstill with comedy because now we realize the the demand for it before it was like, oh, we didn't. Where are these funny people now? Everybody's funny. Anybody's funny. People in Minnesota, people they got a bonnet on. They in the bed all day. <laughs> they they have a great right. POV. They right. have nothing to lose. They're saying anything and everything. They're doing um, the green screen. They are stitching other people's stuff. It's just like everybody's funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually realizing. I'm like, wow, people are out here. The jokes runneth over. Right, but. Stand up is a different thing. It's, it's a, a different diff- beast. It's like being on stage, thing. having an hour, um, writing a joke. It is is different than just like putting your phone up and being like, da, 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 da. right. Which is great. That I I don't say that that is not talent. That is I try it and I'm like, oh no no no. I have to give them their props. They are really they're not just saying anything and doing it. There there is a science to it. Right. But I think that as a as a stand up. In order to have longevity, you got to be able to do long stretches and just be able to get the intricate bits that you might not can do online because everything is like 30 seconds, quick, 60 quick, seconds, quick, quick, three minutes maybe, if you can even get their attention for that long. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, it's a completely different beast. It works in LA because I think LA wants instant gratification. 
it was it, people want to oh i can see you oh i like it boop then you got you know 20,000 people following you i mean you can really do some good work with that but now i think as a stand up you're like so what's the whole point of d- working hard when you're like i could do a couple of like bits that blow up i don't even have an hour yeah there's some people who are blowing up they don't even have an hour but they're going on the road and you need an hour to get people or i mean at least in half right or even be able to just know how to structure a show a show yeah to get people a performance so well so i will say this from what you're from what you're saying mm-hmm. being there are people who have funny mannerisms yeah the way that they speak sometimes mm-hmm. what they say how they say it um like you said, they have their bonnet on. They have their, you know, their thing, mm-hmm. right? And you got to remember the pandemic. The pandemic made everybody realize, like, oh, what am I holding back for? Like, right. anything goes. And it does not, it literally doesn't matter. Stand-up is a little different because if you are a, a you know, rando in the middle of America, like, talking-ish about a celebrity or whatever, it doesn't matter. You might not ever meet them. Yeah. But if you're a stand-up... There is so the the proximity of actually getting to meet these people, <laughs> working with these people, being in rooms with them. Yeah. It is like six degrees of separation. Right. One day you're like, I'm in some dusty basement in Brooklyn, and then the next you're in Atlanta working with this person that you might have said something about. About. Yeah, and you still have to be professional about that. You like, kinda okay, do. <laughs> you kinda yeah. do. Yeah. Just just a smidge because yeah. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. So it's like you don't want to make your whole thing talking talking shit about people. Right. You want to actually have like uh, experiences. You like maybe your family relationship. You right. actually want to have a POV that can last more than just like the buzzy like oh I'm 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 have commentary on this and right. I'm talking ish about that. It's because it's like that stuff people will get eventually tired of it. Yeah. Or you only have a certain type of crowds or be, uh, audience that's following you that's following that and mm-hmm. liking that about you yeah that's yeah. What, so that's what i was going to say it's like it's one thing to see something that is like you know a 30 second 15 second whatever blah blah yeah. blah but in order to make a show like i don't know if you follow joanne the scammer yes i'm obsessed my girl obsessed, Obs- uh, obsessed she was like with joanne one, right I- icon icon of the of the times yes with the instagram but before the reels. Before before all of it, right? So, yeah. like, amazing. And I will watch the videos. And, like, you know, if I'm feeling bad or down or whatever, like, especially during the pandemic, I'm like, oh, my God, my girl is doing it. I'll make me laugh. But she created a character. Character, yeah. And so would I want to see Joanne stand up? Sure. Mm, yeah, yeah. But the person who Joanne is, that's not the character. Right. No. And so what I mean is it's like you are Sid. So people yes. are coming for yeah. you and yeah. how you build and create your show and the things that you say. And, you know, having like, I, I mean, they always say comedians are so intelligent yeah. because you have to. Not all, but yes. <laughs> but, but, but in order, I mean, the big ones, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, because you have to have a certain type of intelligence to you know, they call it, um, there's interpersonal and intrapersonal yes. intelligences. Yeah. And it's how you, to communicate how you feel about something and make other people understand, but then also communicate how someone else could feel about something. Yes. And I think that those are the intelligences that we're talking about. Not necessarily IQ, right? But I'll hear a joke and I'm like, I'm right there. Yeah. I'm like, they just said exactly what I was thinking. Oh, I was thinking that, you know, or or about whatever subject they're mm-hmm. talking about, right? So, um, and those jokes are great because that gets people like on your side that like mm-hmm. that's relatable, that's mm-hmm. under, and they feel like oh that person is me. But sometimes as a stand up, you're literally just talking about like your childhood or things that yes. specifically happen to you or make you who you are. Mm-hmm. So when they don't laugh at the joke, you're like. Oh, you don't like me. You don't like my life. I'm a fucking mess. Oh, okay, I should quit. You know, but when yes. you can when you are like making fun of other things or things that are happening around you or like yes. or you're a character, you're like, well, that is an extension. That's not me. Uh, right. So I think right. when you're doing something on this business, you're like, oh, okay. I sometimes I do recommend that route because 
you don't take it personal. You know right, what I mean? Right, because it's Joanne. It's, jo it's Joanne. Joanne's being a and mess. And you're like, but if you know, I think his name is Jonathan or I'm not for sure. Brandon. 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 If you, Brandon, you're like, you don't know Brandon. Mm -hmm. Brandon is not online. That, right. So you might not like the, uh, the the character, but you might, but his friends and everybody else likes him. You know? Right. So right. We love, jo listen, Brandon, Joanne, if anyone knows obsessed. him, listen, we're obsessed. A real legend. I'm, I met Truly. Joanne at the MTV Awards. I don't know, maybe like. Maybe ten ten years ago, mm -hmm. maybe the VMA at the VMA is like mm -hmm. ten years ago. Very very nice guy, and it was so funny. Yeah, and like, but I mean, you just have to doing this type of work. Mm -hmm. You have to stay level headed. Mm -hmm. You have to again have a plan. How do we stay level headed? Level headed. Um, again, like right now, everything is internet based, mm -hmm. and you could get really caught up in the comments or just the praise. Or the constantly being in that world and not what's around you and being present. And you could, it could really take you off the edge. Oh, yeah. And that, like, that's your whole life. And I wanna be able to create work that's, again, an extension of me, mm -hmm. but this is not all of what I'm doing. And I have something completely different. So, yeah. Um, it's, it, it's really hard to actually be online right now, considering I'm like, yo, I don't wanna have to depend on. Like, this is the only way I'm going to garner fans is right. me being, a you know, front facing, putting up jokes all the time. It's it's really exhausting, but I see the people who do it. It's a machine. And mm -hmm. if you have other people helping you, right. then I think you can stay a little bit more level headed. But you ever seen an influencer just, I mean, see them in the restaurant, they're taking the pictures of the food, then they're, they're put, propping the phone up, they got their people in the back. You're like... I don't know if I want to be with Cynthia. Every time we go to dinner, this is what we're doing. Yeah. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it's but this is what's this is what's getting the people. This is you have to constantly be on. You have to feed the beast. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. the older I get, I'm like, girl. If I was 23, girl. And that's and why a lot of influencers are 23. 23, partying. <laughs> I'm I'm like yeah. older. I'm sober. I'm like, I don't really, I ain't got it in me all the time. I'm like, mm. But I think if you have a plan and you can execute it in a way and just know like, I'm going to bang this out and then put my phone down, I think it's it's brilliant. People yeah. are making, the mon there's money to be made. There's people to follow you. Mm -hmm. Any Everybody and anybody can be a star in their own right. Right. In whatever they have to offer. Mm -hmm. So I do I do love that, mm -hmm. what's happening right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And that's where your influencer friends come in. Yeah. Because there's no way that if me being an influencer or a creator are at, at dinner with you and you have like, to take a photo or this or that, that I'm going to be like, Ugh. now, if I know I have to post something, I'm not going to bring my mom. Because no. she's going to be like, girl, what? Yes, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, I'm not going to bring my brother. <laughs> I'm not going to bring someone who, you know, works in finance and I haven't caught up with in so long. Yeah. Like, I'm going to be like, okay, let's have a girl's dinner. Mm -hmm. w invite some influencer friends or people who are also in who this world doing with it me. And they're doing it We're too. all doing it together. Yeah. And like, you know, so that's like something that I also had to learn, like time and place, right? Time and place. Yeah, because I have some really private friends who yes. I never take pictures of or post with or anything, you know, because they're just private and I respect who their are privacy. They? How, can they teach, teach, teach me? How do you be private? I'm I like, I am either all in or I'm I'm running away. Well, these are people who like. I want to find a middle ground. Mm. I want to find a middle because for me, I be like, I just can't be on. Mm -hmm. I can't be on my phone. Like I literally like this week, the last week I wasn't on. I didn't even check my Instagram mm -hmm. because as soon as I log in, I feel like I have to You're let flooded. people know what I'm doing, where I'm at, who I'm with. I have to post. I have to engage, and then I'm like, my whole day went by. I'm like, girl, you didn't been on your bed. You your bed rotting. You've been on your being, phone. Uh, being on, on your phone mm -hmm. the whole time, and it's like, go outside. It's like eighty degrees. Well, the only thing that I can say to combat that, because I also struggle with it a lot. Mm -hmm. This is something that I talk to my manager about a lot. Okay. Um, I just have to accept. The, I just have to accept. Yeah. Today we were on it. We, we we posted all the things. We did all the things. We kept yes. people up to date. This other day, I did not do that. 
And that's okay. <laughs> yeah. And that's okay. Because the true people who love you, they're not going anywhere. No. They're not going anywhere. They love you. They want to know what's up with you, whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, yes, it's your job, but also at the same time, it's like when you don't have a team and all those, that's why you can't compare yourself. No. Because all those people who are doing it left, right, center, most of those people have a team and they have people helping they them. They have about seven people on there. Or they're also younger and all of their friends are doing this. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's nothing to be like, girl, come over here and shoot this. Da, 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 blah, blah. That's all they're talking about. Mm-hmm. I have a friend who is younger than me and her for, like her besties that she hangs out with all the time, all of them, they're all influencers, all of them. And they so, know how to do it. Well, it's just like, you're not even saying nothing. And they're just like, oh, let me take this picture, girl. Yeah. Let me, because it's just like, that's how their brain is constantly working, right? right? And that's not how my brain constantly works. Mm-mm. I'm like, let's connect. Let's talk. Let's get into it. Let's this, let's that. Oh, we, we don't want to record this conversation. Right. You know what I mean? Like, we're talking about some <laughs> shit right now. You know, so, yeah. that, so it's like, you know, building that community of people in your life, I think is super important that are, you know, no matter what industry you're in, it's like, you know, you ha- if you're going to grow in something, you have to have people in your life that understand what you need to do. It's not yes. that you want to do it, but you kind of need to do it. Need to. It, it's a need. Mm-hmm. But also then you're kind of like, all right, where do I draw the line? Because like right now for me, I, I kind of have an issue um, with some sometimes the, the dating uh, content where people will be on a date. They're like taking kind of like pictures of the person, then they're going home and then like ha- rehashing the dates. <laughs> and like some of it is really funny, right? But it, it, my girlies, they eat it down. Like I'm like, oh, I was there. I feel like I was on a date with them. But then three months later, they're complaining about the dating world. And I'm like, well, I'm watching. I don't I don't trust anybody on dating. I don't want to date you. I don't, I, if Cause I you're going to be like this. Yeah, if yeah. I see everyone talking about what and what what we ordered and what I said and how I smelled, I don't feel safe. Yes. I don't feel safe. And I think that we need to be more in the moment with the dating than always rehashing because then it's like, is this all for entertainment? Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like I want I want fun and dating stuff, but sometimes I'm just like, this y'all, is didn't scary. Even, y'all didn't even wait. This is you scary. You came home right after. I'm like, girl, give us like a week or something. Like, yeah. Because if it's me and I saw you went on a date with me and you talking about, oh, I, I paid for the bill, but like my card was ashy. <laughs> Blocked. <laughs> like, I'm ne- like you're ne- we're never going on a date again. And then I then I got to get online and I got to tell my, I got to stitch. Now I got to stitch your video and be like, so yeah, my card was ashy, but did it work? But- was it declined? Never. Right. So right, right. I don't want to be doing that. That's why I'm like, but I I love that people are finding ways to that is you know, entertaining. Create well. the create the content and having the discussion. But there's got to be a fine line of like entertainment, and then you are actually impeding on people's like privacy and space and the the whole world itself. You know. Well, that's the whole thing with. I think that's the biggest thing with um with. Uh, social media in general Mm -hmm. it's just like if you and i tell my sister this because she's is a private person but she wants to post this and she wants you know she has this new business she she wants i said listen she's like so you think people from like high school gonna try to follow me and yes i said yeah i literally i said Mm -hmm. either you get into this game or you don't there it is when you open yourself to the internet there it is I mean, I go on dates with people. I'm not perfect. Somebody could, I talk about dates all the time. I don't ever say specifically. I never, val- you know, like say like, I went on a date with this, this guy, yeah. this, this, this. You say no. it like it could be, it could have happened at any time. Exactly. And, and sometimes it is. And let and me I tell like you, that. I have had people DM me being like, you talking about me? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> I love that you think that, but no. I'm not even actually talking about it. and if I was I would have told him but I wasn't which is crazy that's another thing that I that's <laughs> another thing about being like a comedian or an entertainer or like an influencer or anything once somebody knows what you do then they're like oh you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna talk about this you're, yeah like then they work extra hard to make it a moment and so they're in your you know your bits or whatever and mm-hmm. I'm like Actually, you're not that special. Right. You know, like, what makes you think that yeah. I want to talk about you? Exactly. So then then that also takes me out of the moment because I'm like, oh, Here we now go. this person is, is putting on. And I don't like that. Yeah. And I do think that there's a level of 
insecurity that comes with that too. Because anyone who's ever mentioned anything about my, in- there's guys who I date, they say nothing about nothing. my Instagram. And there's guys who I date who are like, oh man, I bet you a lot of dudes in your DM. <laughs> and I'm just like, do you care about that for real? Yeah. Because yeah. am I not on a date with you right now? Like, you know, so there's a level of insecurity I think that comes along with that. But um, I th- honestly, I feel like you have to just deal with every situation differently. Yes. And solely. Mm-hmm. And that at least that's what I try to do, right? So we have to go back a little bit because you went to LA for love. Yes, I did. And <laughs> we when, got off. Wait, we we got, got, oh, I was we, like, how do we not talk yeah, about that? No, 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 <laughs> no, no, we don't have to talk all no, 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 go no, into no. detail. I, but, I want to, I want to. But it's about the, you went there, you were there for a year and a half. Taking a risk. Taking a risk, yeah. exactly. And Congratulations for doing that for yourself. I did it. Regardless of it working out or not, that is a brave thing to do for yourself, to trust yourself enough to do something like that, right? A move. I mean, a move out of a city that I literally feel like there's no other place that's better than Mm -hmm. that one. one, All of my like core friends in New York, leaving Mm -hmm. them, um, just like feeling the the safety of knowing that I know where everything is. I don't need a car. I get on the train. I don't need anybody in New York. In, in L.A., I felt like I was constantly asking, like, hey, Dependent. can you pick me up? Or can you, do you know how, where this is? It, it, I mean, it was a big deal. Mm-hmm. But I think that we, you got to shake it up. You got to shake the table. You got to, doing the same thing over and over and over and being content with the mundane life, uh, even in the chaotic mundane life, I feel like you might be holding yourself back a little bit. Yep. So I definitely went. What did we I learn? Got, I learned, um, I learned it's okay to be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you are uncomfortable, you, you actually grow yes. from being uncomfortable yes. and you start to look inward and you figure out like it's before I would, sometimes I would pinpoint a lot and be like, it's them. It's them. But in this situation, being in LA, I was able to look in. And I was like, "Oh, girl, you got some work to do." It's it be you. It's mm-hmm. definitely like the the sense of wanting to be independent and then not, and then also going somewhere and making it about a relationship is like. I don't recommend that for anybody. <laughs> I feel like you have to have your own thing. Yeah. And even if you have your own thing, I think you kind of need to be a little bit more secure in your thing to actually like move in with somebody in another, like on the East Coast, the West Coast, or whatever, Wherever, yeah. cohabitat and, and make it be chill. Because once you're trying to get settled and you're trying to make your relationship work and you're trying to get money and you don't know how to drive and you can't fold a fit a sheet or cook... <laughs> And you don't like the dog, like it's gonna be a problem. It's, oh, you're, it, it's gonna be dog. it's gonna be a layer of things that's like gonna make it harder than what it is. And you want to actually give the relationship a real chance, and you want to give this new surrounding a new chance. And I think doing it all at once is no bueno. Yeah, not for for me. Yeah, that's what I learned. And did you guys move in together? No, I was already moving into somebody else's space. That's another thing. It's like I think there needs to be a collab. There needs a, when you're with a partner, collabing always feels more cohesive yes. than if you're just already moving into somebody's space. I, first of all, you know, I don't know how to, you know, Marie Kondo anything. I don't know how to come. I'm not interior design. So I don't know how to come in and be like, let me move your stuff around. I'll just be like, your stuff is there. I'm here. And then, you know, you never really feel like it's yours yeah. because wait so you did move in together I moved yeah I moved in to her already place oh, okay, yeah, okay she okay. already had a place oh, okay, so okay, okay. I moved in with her we didn't get an apartment together oh, right, and then right, right, collab right, right. on that right that right. would have been I think better. for the future it would have just been better for me yeah so that I feel like it's it's us it's ours you mm-hmm, know it, mm-hmm. more than it's me coming in and be like hi my stuff is everywhere so sorry you know yeah because yeah. that is me I I'm one of those people that Ooh, I hope you have a lot of counter space. You got to have, a, like, I, the girls that know how to do their makeup and then put it away <laughs> right after. Who are you? I don't trust you. I If it doesn't, it, I need it to look like you did a whole, like, Picasso painting, on, like, on the counter yes. for me to know that, like, oh, I, me and you, we're the same. Like, yes. I, I can talk to you. I can gossip with you. The girls that are doing their makeup and then putting everything away, 
I'm, mm, no, <laughs> she can't be trusted. And I was the person, I was literally like, I'm, and I'm gay, so I'm living with another woman, mm -hmm. and she is not really like a makeup girly, so my stuff is everywhere, and she's like, mm -hmm. that could ruin a relationship, I'm gonna tell you that right now. So your, your stuff everywhere, you not putting things away, after a while, you like, so you live like this? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. I do. I have a lot going on. And no, I can't put my compact, my foundation, all my brushes away. Because I'm already late. I started 45 minutes before I was supposed to, to get ready. So I'm I'm already an hour behind. Yeah. You're not, this is not getting cleaned until three days later. Yeah. I, that's why I like having a vanity. Yes. It's like, so that's it, where it stays. Yeah. That's where it goes. That is its place. Oh. That's it. Must be nice. Yeah. I don't know. About, yeah. I, well, well, before I moved to LA, I had a vanity. Yeah. And you're right. Like I, I you did just didn't it. move it. Yeah. It stayed there. Mm -hmm. Right. Like everything stays there. I know that where everything is, it's gonna stay there. Yeah. That's it. I'm not going over here to the back. To the, 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 the no, it stays here. Yeah. So yeah, that is that that changed my life for mm -hmm. sure. Cause same girl. Like I have three different bags and this and that. So and, much makeup. So much and, then, makeup. And, and then you be on the internet and you're like, I gotta buy it all. Uh, there's a new setting powder. There's a new setting spray. There, there's a new moisturizer, a, a palette. Like, I have to have it all. Yeah, you and do. And it's all on the counter. <laughs> it's all there. I and need yeah. to see it. I need to see. Because if it's in a bag, it's not there. I, do I even have it if it's in a bag? It's a panic, actually. It has to be out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel that. And I have. Yeah. No, I feel that. So we go there. We don't like it there. Is that why we break up? Or the, also the relationship didn't work? No. The I, I think, like. You don't know who someone is until you like live, live with, with them. them. Yes, and even if you think you know them before mm -hmm. they y'all move in, y'all don't. You don't know them. You yeah, don't know, you don't know how they have like can cohabitat with you. Yeah, and so and it just so happened that moving to LA, I heard that it takes two years to really like get in the thick of LA and like feel comfortable and would, things start going right. I would say that. Yeah, that's two like, years. That's, that's that that seems accurate to Girl, me. Girl, I had it. I ha I have two years. Yeah. I said, I need everything to be start working out. And you got nine months, mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. uh, soon, like nine months, I'm still like, meh. And then everything, like just bad stuff after bad stuff kept happening. And I said, oh, LA is cursed. Like like, like professionally or personally? Um, I, yeah, I wasn't really working like that. Mm -hmm. I had a friend die. My mom oh. died. Like, oh, every, God. It was just, I'm sorry it, to hear It was that. just like back to back. It, the universe was like, girl, you have to get up out of here. So, you, yeah. And so all this stuff happened. Then I'm depressed. And then it's like, okay, so maybe you need, maybe, maybe we, maybe you need some time. And so we break up. I move back here to New York and just like everything just started, boop, 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 just started working again. Wow. And it was like, oh, that was, that was literally the universe, God telling me, you maybe you need to be in New York. Maybe you're a New York early. For Evs. I mean, maybe for Evs, but definitely this season. Yeah. Right? And yeah. I feel like sometimes though, the seasons of the like but when you think about how much you grew in that year and a half. Yeah. As like a person. Yes. Right? And, I did grow. Right? I did grow. I, I am now like almost a size six. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yes, you are tr true. You know me. Yes, ma'am. No, no, I did. I did grow. You're I did. So grow. Funny. I, I did. I did grow like emotionally, yes. uh, intellectually. Mm -hmm. Knowing, I, I grew in terms of like it's okay to ask for help. Mm. Like I was really bad at asking for help because I was always about like I'm I N D E P E. I was like I'm independent girl. Do you know what I don't that have means? Me. I don't yeah. need nobody. Like I yes. have to have my own stuff. Yeah. I need to. Be able to get up and go and not worry and count on anybody. Yeah. And in LA, I had to call. I had to call the friend. I needed to call a, call a friend. And you like, realized that that was okay. It was okay. Yeah. And, and that's what community is about. Yeah. If you feel like you can't call people, you got to have a certain amount of people to to hit up if you need to listen. You know, can you help me move something? Can you drive me here? Can you like what can where it's all about the exchange. Yeah. So I learned in LA, like everybody's not for themselves. There are people there will yeah. be people there that want that will to, help you. To, that want to help you. But it was for me feeling okay with that. Yeah. I was very uneasy needing the help. 
Well, that's also like I think that's a common thread too with black women, yeah. right? Um, the sense of like just be grateful. That that's one thing that I'm always like, <laughs> you know, just be. You have air to breathe. You're alive today. Be be grateful. It's like mm. what is life? Yeah, exactly. No, ma'am. That's yeah. not how it's good. Now, first of all, yes, I'm I am grateful to be living. Right. But I'm I'm not grateful to get scraps. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not grateful exactly. for struggle. Like, exactly. I, I deserve... And I feel like that's how we were raised. Yeah. You know, it's true. like a like it's like a thread of things, and also knowing that when I look at all these successful people. None of these people did it on their own. And that's the one thing that's so interesting about men to women also in business because men will call each other. They'll phone a friend in a minute like, oh, I got this business idea. You want to invest? You want to this? You want to that? Da, 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 blah, blah, blah. Whereas with women, we're not thinking about each other when we have a business idea or this or that or whatever with each other. And they instantly go there, right? Yeah. And that's why they keep, you know, the boys group stays going with the boys group. But also people who are like, you know, middle class up or even like entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Like when you think business oriented, you are also thinking about collabs and like you have how to, to expand. It's not just um, linear. You have to be able to go across and then you build and you can't do that just sticking to, oh, we're friends. Okay, we're friends, but do you want to do some business? Mm -hmm. You, you want to put some money in this? Mm -hmm. Or like, do you have an idea? Let's mm -hmm. let's grow on that. So I do realize that like people who, you know, grew up wealthy, they they stay wealthy because those are co those connections. Yes. They're also not afraid to use those connections. Mm -hmm. And then when they have people with them, they put them on. So right. it's a constant... Right. Um, you know, just monkey barring to the next mm -hmm. like venture and making more money and, and extending. Yeah, yeah. Like I always say, I'm an ideas person. Like I'm I, an ideas person. Yeah, I have so many ideas. I'm a so, bad student, though. Hmm. I'm a bad student. Well, good thing we I have. Idea, I have idea. There's people who have great ideas, right? But then that's why college is useful because then you can utilize like how to actually execute these ideas. Right. I, that's what I will say about college. Um, she didn't finish. I will say that <laughs> if I would have utilized college in a way that like it just gives you the tools on. How, you might not know all this information, but it shows you like this is how you turn in things, this is deadlines, this right. is how you stay focused, right. this is about structure. Right. You know, because at the end of the day, do everybody is everybody knowing utilizing their majors? Absolutely not. Mm -mm. But they are utilizing the people they learned they've met in college mm -hmm. to help them get jobs and extend on things and mm -hmm. partner with stuff. And they also know how to like, oh, I, I know how to stay on track. Right. Because I learned that in school. And now I, and then and now I, I graduated. Yeah. But right. if you're a person who doesn't have structure and kind of just like, hey, we're going to see how this go and like things, dates, deadlines, and stuff, it stresses you out. You're like, oh my God, I got to turn this in. I don't know. And you self-sabotage. Yes. So, um, I yes. will I will say that um, in LA, I've learned that I'm like, you, you got to stay on track. Got to be on the track. You got to, you have to. Sometimes it's only you that's getting in the way. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, like you'll be like, oh, the industry doesn't want me. You know, they don't care. It's like, no, sometimes it's you that's stopping you yes. from being where you want to be. Or even even the belief, even the belief of mm. thinking like, oh, I'm funny. I could do this or I deserve or I'm a star or whatever. It's I, I met so many people in L.A. It, it, on paper, talent, they ain't got it. But it in here mm. oh you can't tell them mm. and so that will propel them and move them forward and a lot of the time people are sheep and they just need to know and know that you know that you can do it or you got it and that makes people gravitate to you as well yes the, the actual belief that actually and that's why i think like we get mad at i don't know like nepo babies and stuff like that but it, it's like yeah these people are setting them up to believe that you deserve you should, you can, mm -hmm. and that's why they get it. And mm -hmm. even if it's a flop, it's like, yeah, I, I'm supposed to have this. Yes. What are you talking about? Yes. My I, my lineage has has worked hard enough, so I I should get this job. Yeah. What's the problem? Yeah. And um, you know, I I think half the time doing this, even with like comedy and even me putting out stuff on the internet, it's just, do you believe this is good? Like, what? Why are you being so, you know, anal or mm -hmm. precious about it? just put it out there? Mm -hmm. You never know. Well, so I always say it's the same thing with starting a podcast. People are like, why would you start a podcast? It's so oversaturated. It's so this. It's so that. Ugh. And my experience, 
um, is specific to me, mm -hmm. but my voice is not everywhere. No. And neither is yours, right? And so that's where, especially as black women, I always say it's like, I don't want to say it's my duty. That's mm -hmm. like, I don't feel. That's a lot. That's a yeah, lot of pressure. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, like, I don't want to say that it's my duty, mm -hmm. but I will say that I take pride in sharing my thoughts yeah. with everyone and all different types of people from my perspective. And that's something that I, I mean, obviously we look more alike than other people, right? But seeing you as a comedian and you're funny and I think you're great and I like saw your video and I was like, oh my God, I have to follow her. She's so funny, right? And another girlfriend of mine is uh, sent it to you. It's just like, just seeing you on stage as a fan, as someone who loves comedy, I'm like, that's amazing that she wakes up and says, I'm gonna go do this. Yeah. Like this is what I'm gonna go do. And, and again, I don't want you to feel that pressure of like duty because that's not the right word, but it's more so a pride that you that you are gonna get up and go do it and you can and believe in yourself that you can because there yeah. are people that are looking at you that's like, you know, that's hand clapping, true. right? But you know what? Sometimes we get caught up in the the conversation of like haters and you know, I don't oh, you don't wanna see them. me, you know, you know, yeah. And, and so sometimes you're like, it's for me, sometimes I wake up and I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm ready to go. Like I'm, I'm gonna start my day. I'm gonna put myself out there, and then I go in my head. I'm like, oh, I don't know that they, they, they might not. And, and it's just like you have to, you have to push through that and know that, mm -hmm. like you said, things, everything is oversaturated. But right. you can, and I've someone said this before. There's been a block where there's McDonald's <laughs> and there's Burger King, and Burger King is not gonna move just because McDonald's is there because they're right. like. Burger King has something that you know McDonald's, McDonald's doesn't, doesn't have, right? And so, and that's all and individual. That's how, you, that's how you have to look at anything in any field that you're in. Is like everybody, there's room for everybody. Everybody's supposed to be where they're supposed to be, and you just have to focus on like what you're serving, yes, and what you're gonna give, and what the people are gonna come to you for specifically. So, yeah, and I will say too, like there are people that I see that are, you know, in a certain industry and is so oversaturated. And you're like, yeah, wait, that one looked just like that one. Mm -hmm. And that one is serving just with that one serving. And, 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 you know, but I don't feel that way about us. You know what I mean? I don't look at you and you're like, oh, yeah, she's just like that other comedian. Right. Where? Yeah. <laughs> Where? Thank you. I appreciate do you know, that. But do you know what I mean? <laughs> and when you really think about that, you're like, uh, no, it's like, you know, I was on The Bachelor, right? I was on the TV show. And you can look at some of the bachelorettes and you're like, oh, yeah, that one looked just like that mm -hmm. one. And that one, or The Bachelor specifically, The Bachelor. Specifically. It's like these bachelors, it's like, okay, they all came from the same. Same formula. Yeah, they, exactly. Yeah, you're like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, but then you see someone like a Rachel Lindsay or, you know, um, just a, a person of color they're about to have their first uh, Asian bachelorette. Who going to be like her? She's not showing up like it because she has such a unique, different background and everything specific to her. And that is something that I think is so important. And it's something to amplify because there are so many people in the world that regardless of what you look like are going to relate to you. But then there's the people in the world that do look like you that are going to relate to you even more. Yeah. But they don't see that representation. They don't see that in the world um, or in whatever you know in the comedy world or whatever you want to call it right that's why i love tiktok because like you said like even if it's oversaturated i there's so many girls that are doing makeup i'm watching them i'm yep. watching them all there's so many people talking about dating i'm watching them. the cooking i'm watching them yeah i'm watching them all honey if the phone is on and i got some wi-fi i'm watching them <laughs> yes I'm, and, and like yes. and i'm i'm a i'm a person that like i know so many people in the actual industry that's like you know doing this specifically they're getting paid to yeah. do their art i'm yeah. like I want to know this random per I'll never meet this person ever. Mm -hmm. I, I love just knowing their get ready with me's and knowing mm -hmm. what they're doing with their kids or like their their aunt. Like I, I follow the people because I'm like, everyone is interesting in their own way. Right. And I just learned that last year mm -hmm. by like really sitting with, you know, the phone and saying like, I'm appreciating, you know, all these people are just random updates and I'm. I'm like, oh, this is why you need to do this because there's probably somebody looking at you like this as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're definitely like, yeah, what? Sydney is always late to something. She's always sweating. <laughs> She's running around. She lost something. Yes. Another AirPod is gone. Like, <laughs> yeah. they want to know. They oh, want to know. Dated. Like, they, people want to know. So it's just yeah. like, you have to know that 
you are important. Yes. You are worthy. People have so much time on their hands, even though they don't. But they're at work. They should be working. They're not. <laughs> they're not. So they want to know. Yeah. They want to know what you're doing and what you have to say. And um, I feel like long as you're not hurting people, mm-hmm. like physically hurting people and also just being nasty. Right. Right. Why not? Yeah. So, okay. So let's talk about being nasty. Being nasty. Being nasty. Well, <laughs> the state of comedy and mm-hmm. everyone being so, and you know, the reason why the overview was like laughter is like what, it's like we need it, right? Yeah. We need the laughter. But I feel like they have, you know, uh, social media and the state of the world a lot of times and where things have gone. Uh, you know, I love Richard Pryor, mm-hmm. right? But like, there's a lot of stuff that he has said that's cancel, it, cancel, it will, cancel, yeah, cancel button. Go, it will not fly right Yeah. Now. But how do you, number one, how do you think that affects the comedy community and like having to go up and create your bit and then be like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Do you, does that happen to you when you're about to, when you're about to do something? Or are you just like, if I get canceled, whatever? Um, <laughs> unfortunately, right? Like, because people are so unhinged online, you kind of don't know. You don't, don't know until know. someone's like, this is inappropriate. This is, but like when you're on stage and if you say, if you write a joke and it's funny, for the most part, an audience is going to laugh. Mm-hmm. Like if you're in control, you're like, this is, this is what make I think is funny. Mm-hmm. They're kind of going to be on board unless, unless you're so niche where they're like, I don't, I don't, I get, don't it. get it. I don't understand. Yeah. But like online in which I, I see this a lot actually like being problematic is the move (laughs) that's going to get more engagement Mm -hmm. that is going to get people talking more Mm -hmm. and if you if you play it safe or if you say the right thing right it it is like people are going to watch but like why are they going to remember you just said something that everybody else can get on board with you know right so for me i think talking about stuff that's more specific to me mm-hmm. and like my life yes. will get somebody to be more interested in me so yep. that they're not, I'm not just leaning on the joke. I'm, right. Cause people, you know that people are funny, but that doesn't make you be like, oh, I want to go buy a ticket or I want to go hang out with them or I want to buy the, whatever product they're selling or, uh, or, oh, they got a TV show that it's, it's gotta be more than just the funny. Cause there's some tons of memes that we saw that we laugh can't find it, don't know where it is. I ain't looking for it. Just yeah. know that the meme is out there. The meme you know? is out there. So um, for me- But I, I think don't... that's, I was gonna say that's really smart though too because if I disagree, just like the dog thing, right? Yeah, right. I clearly am that person on the Delta flight with the dog. Yeah. But I can't be mad, mad. at you because that's your, your perspective. perspective. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's really smart. Yeah. yeah. For, for for me. And for then, you, yeah. Also, I- uh, um, I'm I'm learning that because you because you don't you don't know right because like when you do a, an audience in real life they pay money they came out they wash their ass or not, or not and they came and they're sitting and they're two drink men and they got food do they really want you to freaking be mean and be mean and talk shit and be sad and like not like they don't people like want to have a good time mm-hmm. right there's people online that live in the middle of nowhere that can say whatever online and it don't matter but it like where I am, like in my career, I kind of, I kind of do need to be like conscious and right. make smart moves so that I'm not having issues all the time with people. Right, right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I I remember. Oh, this is this is a thing. Like this is a recent thing. I you know I me and my girlfriend broke up. Then I came back to New York and I hooked up with some dudes. And I I made a joke about it online. I posted it. I, I said that I'm an, an uppercase L. I was because like I wasn't. I'm just a lesbian. I'm not that. But then I relapsed and I was with a couple of dudes. I'm a lowercase L, but I'm not bisexual. And the lesbians was like, "You are embarrassing. You are not a lesbian. You are bisexual. You're a piece of shit. You're a dick sucking." I was like, uh, "Whoa, girl, you <laughs> you need some dick because why why are y'all in my DMs dragging in me your DMs. dragging me like this wow. and like sending me paragraphs? It's like Hey, this is my experience, and if 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 I 
don't want to consider myself something like that's not for you to say. Who's the board of LGBTQ to tell me? I thought the thing about being in the LGBTQ is that it is fluid and that right. we are able to be ourselves right. and like there is, it's not strict rules. Mm-hmm. So I made a joke about it and they were like, you know, there was, it was a lot of, I'm not, I'm not going back with you yeah. going back and forth. I don't, don't do that. Don't, like don't, that's don't, not don't. what I'm paying my phone bill yeah. for yeah. to be like arguing, arguing with somebody behind user 2-47 with a with a picture of Pikachu. I'm not I'm not mm-hmm. doing that. That's mm-hmm. not my which but, is probably actually an ex-girlfriend. Yeah, I think more people should just like take in the stuff that's good, the things mm-hmm. that they enjoy, mm-hmm. be post the stuff that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I do think we all have a we all have to come together and if there's stuff that's just extremely bad, get them up out of there. Like, I do believe that there is a way to get things out and let people know that this is not good. Mm-hmm. But everything can't be trash. Yeah. Every, just, everything is trash. Everything, everything is trash. Everything Some people feel that way. Everything is everything trash. Everything is unfunny. Yeah. Come on. I yep. think you got to talk to somebody. Yeah. You got to you gotta pay that 125 and find out why <laughs> everything is bad. Nothing's yeah. good. Yeah. And that's their life, though. Yeah. That's in their life. Yeah. So why did we choose comedy in the first place? Girl, it came to me. It came mm. to me. It literally, I was like career bottle waitress. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, two gigs, like making money, making bank, being at night, you're partying, being with the cool people. And I, I didn't, I was like, I don't, I don't know what's next. I just was like, again, I'm not a planner. I was like, mm, this is, I can't, I can't even think about it. I was like, I didn't even think about girl, what are you going to do when you're 45? I just was like, this is good. Things are going to work out. It's going to come to me. Mm-hmm. And so I would be working and then we would, um, I would close out and then go into the room that we like cash things out. And I would be doing all these jokes and bits and stuff. And then a, a friend like recorded me mm. and my friend Marge, she like recorded me. And then she gave me a compilation of all these things. She's like, you're funny. You need to do something. I was like, I'm fucked up i am drunk i'm high i don't i'm sure it's funny but i'm a mess and she's like no i'm telling you you need to go like go take a class or whatever see just try you never yeah. know yeah and then you know i brought 10 of my meanest friends to one of my shows and they're like this is the worst show we've ever been to but you're funny you actually should continue <laughs> and so shout out to the mean friends that came that were like this is a bad show but you you have potential yeah potential. and that's why that's kind of why I got, I always like was interested in comedy. Like I was watching, like grew up watching like Chris Rock, Wanda yep. Sykes. Yes. Um, Who's Dave your Chappelle. Uh, You know, while being here, I I don't say like the greats like are my faves anymore. I just like people that I know, like yes. my best friend, Marie Faustin, mm-hmm. uh, Zainab Johnson, mm-hmm. Mateo Lane. Like they're like the people that my peers, your peers. Amina Amani, like all, all of my friends. Those are the people that I enjoy watching and yep. like can't can't get enough of. Yes. Um, but like, you know, I think the people who were amazing growing up in that time, I was I was like extreme fan and like they were the reason why I'm like watching like late night sets and stuff. Mm-hmm. But you know, now it's just like it could be anything and everything. I'm like trying to find the funny in anything mm-hmm. and um trying to try- find the funny in anything. And having a good time. And that's the good thing about being in New York. You'll have so many instant like interactions, and they, you can find it. Literally, just comes to you, the like, the comedy, the funny moments. You don't have to. You don't have to work hard. You mm-hmm. know, like I just even even in the dating world here, I think it's just funnier. Like I met a dude on on Hinge. We we go to brunch. He spends three hundred dollars. I'm like, oh, this is cute. We're hanging out. Somehow, three dates later, I'm going to his house. He ain't got no electricity. Like. That's like only in New York. <laughs> only in New York. What do will, you mean? No, it rained. Um, no, no electricity. Meaning they were stealing the electricity from someone else's place or somebody, somebody else in the building. You're kidding. And it's like, but you took me to brunch and spent three hundred dollars. So you could have paid. And they were like, that's not where I want to put my money. And I was like, well, I like you want to put it on me. I, 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 <laughs> no, actually, I want you to have your priority. I want to go to a place that has. All of working like plugs. I don't want to like trip over a uh, industrial um, electric cord to get into your bedroom. I don't want to do that. I'd rather you just have like working 
running water, things of that sort. Do we still hook up with this man or do we go home? No, girl, after that, <laughs> I'm like, don't you dare. You better not hit me up. And I actually was went online and I was like, I deserve an apology. <laughs> And I was, and I asked online, I said, when should I get an apology from this person? Mm -hmm. And they were like, girl, you ain't going to get it. You're not going to get it. Because anybody who would have the gall to bring you there, I mean, they their bed wasn't even, like, the mattress, like, felt like I sat on the bed and I fell through the mattress. So anybody who would bring you to a situation, like, they don't have no respect for you. So what what you think they're going to get say sorry to you? Yeah. They thought she was the one and the two. To yeah. play around with. Yeah. And obviously I was, because I went to New, New I went to New Jersey. So that was me. Uh, that, why why'd you go to New Jersey, sis? Why did you do you, that? You clearly don't care about your life. You yeah. don't you But what was it was his location, Jersey? On yes, Tinge? It, oh. was, it was Jersey. And I knew I was going to Jersey. It wasn't like I was kidnapped and then I ended up in Jersey. Mm -hmm. I made that choice mm -hmm. to be in a car mm -hmm. and go to Jersey. Went through the Hol Holland Tunnel and all of that. Yeah, it's like when you when a guy says Lower Manhattan and then you end up on a bridge. You're yeah. like, wait, no, this is Brooklyn. Oh my god, <laughs> we're 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 on the location. Bridge. <laughs> what is it? You know, in location, when it could be whatever you want it to be. What is an address? You yeah. Know? Oh, what? It's more of a vibe. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. Like it's just like things like that. I, I feel like you're just more exposed to the silly things. And so you, so here. you found the the funny in that because yeah. that is funny. Mm -hmm. Three hundred dollars on the on the bill. Girl, at the time it was not. I was uh, uh, I was obviously. on the phone with my girl screaming. I was on the phone with my friend like, bitch, can you believe? Can you believe, girl? I'm in a car. I'm in the Uber back, going back. It's a hundred dollars. And he even said, you want to pay a hundred dollars? Yeah, yeah. I want to be on my bed. I want to be. I want to work. I want to put something in the, the socket, socket. <laughs> and anywhere I please, and let it rock. You know what I'm saying? Like what? Yes, I'm leaving. And then I told people the story. They were like, so did you did you have sex with him? I said, well, what am I putting out there that y'all think that I would have sex with somebody after I knew that they didn't have no electricity and I fell off their bed? Damn, I got to get my life in order. Well, some people are like. Every friend was like. But so. did you fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow, y'all, y'all don't have no faith in me. That's me. But also, that's the comedy that that's they were like. The comedy. They're like, Sydney, we know you. Did you do it or not? Did you bust it wide open or not? And I'm like, I didn't. But, I'm like, why would I? But also, this is funny. So you know what? Maybe. May <laughs> Maybe I should just change this. Or like, girl, you know I did it. You know? <laughs> but then it's like, mm, I don't know if that's funny anymore. That, that just sounds actually sad. And you need to pay that 125, sis, to figure out why. <laughs> but it's like maybe he was that fine. No, no. you were okay. never. They are never that fine. Mm -hmm. They are never that fine. Mm -hmm. If you go in the fridge, they ain't got no food, no nothing. You go in the drawers, they don't have no utensils. You are not that fine. Yeah. I'm going to need you to have some forks, some spoons, some knives. Normal human I need you to have some seasoning. Adult I need you to have some shit. sheets. I yeah. need running water. Heat on. <laughs> you. I don't care how fine you are. Like, okay, your threat <laughs> count is not going to be like 1,200. Yeah. Maybe you that fine where... We we having sex on paper mache sheets, right, right, right. But Crunchy I'm gonna need some electricity, and I'm need you have it needs to be Bed Bath and Beyond at least, <laughs> at least CB two something. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, at this age. Yeah, if, if I was 21, it's a free for all. But at this age, you never that fine. Yeah, no. ever. No, no. Um. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> I took it there. Yeah, you took, I it, took there. it there. <laughs> but but as you said. In the moment, some things might not be funny. But then you look back and you're like, that was crazy as hell. Everything. We did that. And you can do that on a lot of things. Everything. Yeah, yeah. And I think we need to do that more. Um, so what tools are in the wellness toolbox? When we are feeling like, I don't want to do this. I don't know if I can do this. And we're like not giving ourselves that encouragement that we need. What do we do to get there? Ooh, that's a good question. Um... I mean, I, I literally talk to myself every day, all day. I'm learning to be nicer to myself because mm -hmm. I'm like, I am the harshest critic to myself, to my friends and other people. I'm just like, you can do it. I'm like the cheerleader. I'm like, you're amazing. You're doing great. I'm constantly online, like crying for people, like hitting milestones. Like I believe in everybody. For me, it's a, it's a little harder. So now... Um, you know, the affirmations, the yes. knowing, like, sometimes you got to write down all the stuff that you accomplished. Like, look, you couldn't have possibly done all this stuff if you 
or not worthy, <laughs> if you're not good, like, you know, running back, like, but also you are not the things that you've done. You just have to know, like, in your heart, like, hey, this is this is for you. You deserve. Does it make you happy? Do you feel fulfilled? Could you do this if everything wasn't going right? And I've been in it long enough that things were not going right. I did not have any money. I did. Things were a mess, but I would get up and show up for these gigs, not getting paid. Mm. And I enjoyed myself. So yes. it's like, this <clears throat> brings me joy. I am changing, you know, the uh, trajectory for not only myself, but people who look like me or can relate to me. I'm opening doors. I'm doing mm. things like People have written me messages like, hey, you you are like a light. I'm so glad that yes. I can like listen to you on a podcast or see you on stage. Like you're necessary. Yes. The community needs you X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z. So like mm -hmm. I'm constantly just just like simple reminders. reminders. Simple reminders. Um, you know, I rollerblade. You gotta cut out like trash that you're eating. Sometimes the stuff that you're eating is not is it's not good for your soul so that can make you like negative or mm -hmm. shaky or mm -hmm. the doubt so it's just like mm -hmm. cut out the stuff that's not making things light mm -hmm. um drink water i mm -hmm. think water is really necessary mm -hmm. look okay this is water All right. mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. and also call a friend call your friends that yep. are like good at uplifting and yes. just known you through community community reach out and be like girl what is going on? But it then also you just can't you can't be looking out for external validation. So that's why it's always you gotta talk to yourself because it's if you are building you up, then you you don't worry about mm -hmm. what everybody else thinks. Yeah, and that's that's really half the battle. Yeah, that's some of the best advice that I got from a friend uh, coming off the show. It was like you can't feed into the negative. But you also can't feed into the positive. Nope. Because when you're feeling bad, mm -hmm. you're going to want that positive affirmation yep. or that positive feedback from people. But then when you're feeling good and you see something bad, then it can, you know, so you just have to know in yourself. Just have to know. And like none of these people know you for real. Your family knows you. Your friends know you. When my brother calls me and like, oh, yeah, no, I wouldn't post that. I would take that down. I would, I would, no, that's not, that's really? not the thing. Oh, my brother, I love him so much because he will keep me in check. He'll just be like, "Yeah, that's not cool." Wait, like that what? outfit? Yeah, no. You, yeah, yeah. Really? No. Oh, yeah. What's what? Like, what's anything recent that he was like? Um, no, but I will get in my head about certain things that I post, and I'm mm. like, "Okay, should I post this picture? This picture?" And he'll just be like, "Yo, like they're so similar that it don't matter." Yeah. Like if if it was a big difference, I would tell you. Yeah. But you're just being weird now. Yeah. Just post it, you know? Okay. And so it's like stuff like that, and when you know that someone has your best interest at heart. It's like that's important. You, yeah, exactly. So he will just say certain things, or I'll, you know, if I like record a reel or I do like a paid ad or something like that, I'll always send it to him first. And I'm like, you like, he's like, mm, yeah, it's like kind of long. Like I would make it a little lot short, you know. Yeah. Like he, he, and he also is a photographer and a videographer, oh, and he works in the business as well. I love when so, you have one of those. Yeah, so it's great in good that eyes. way. Yeah, people don't have good eyes. They don't have twenty twenty vision. Yeah, it's like you be looking for like people's advice or like what do you think and it's just like girl you can't see you can't yeah. dress you yeah can't see you can't dress you can't give me an opinion yeah what why are you around you got a good heart you got it you good you're a good person well one thing that him and i always talk about and it's such a gym and it's such a bar is like taking advice or taking uh to heart some one saying something who's not in the game yeah so the truth is, is like so many people are on the sidelines. A mat, you know, the players have a coach that yes. they listen to. Yes. And then there's all That's the people in one. this in the stands. Mm -hmm. So if you listen, the dude in the stands like shoot the ball, and the coach was like, you got to pass the ball. Yeah. You, who are you listening to? to? The coach. You, you, you see what I'm yeah. saying? So, you know, taking in people that are your peers who are in the game with you. I think that's so important. And I think that that's such a gem because you can get stuck on what people want you to do. Do you have any uh, words for someone who's like, I think I'm funny, but I'm not a comedian. What would you say to someone who just, who's thinking that about themselves, who wants to actually try, but they're like, I'm just funny. I'm not a comedian. Uh, I think it's like, like, Funny is subjective. So, you know, if you were just talking about funny, think about this. It's like anybody can be funny. Mm -hmm. It's like, but what else? Do you have a message? 
What do you want to put forward? Mm -hmm. What's your story? Mm -hmm. What do you have that's not specific to anything that's like we're seeing, like the trends? Right. Um, do you do you have what do you have to offer to people who are just getting the funny? You yes. know, because you want to have longevity in it, but also it's like, hey. The world is on fire. Try it. Try it. Work. See how it goes. But just know that everything is not instant. Everything is not like about followers or no. going viral. It's like you really just got to put in the work yeah. and be ready to work and have a plan mm -hmm. and have fun. Yeah. Are yeah. you having fun? Are you making people kind of feel good? That people have like a really terrible week. And then they would they pay twenty five dollars plus two drinks to come see you, yes. and then leave and be like, "Damn, that was a good time." Like, yep. those are things to think about mm -hmm. if you think you're funny and you want to be a comedian, because mm -hmm. it's a at the end of the day, it's a business. It's a business. Can you can you sell tickets? Can people will people show up? Um, yes. Are you moving things in a way that? People are like, I'm gonna come out here. I'm gonna do that. Whatever you doing, whatever you putting down, I'm picking up. Yep. You yep. Know? Yep. So that's really great advice. Yeah. Okay. Rapid fire, and then we're done. First thing that comes to mind: favorite place to perform. Favorite place to perform. Uh, DC Improv. DC Improv. It, okay. Yeah, DC Improv. One of the best. Uh, venues mm -hmm. treat treat the staff the staff is amazing. Uh, the Booker is great. Shout oh. out to Antoine. Like yep. it's just such a it's a cool space. You do you can they people sh literally show up for comedy. They're real comedy fans and yep. people are hot in DC. They mm -hmm. work. They're yep. ready to spend. It's yep. like it's great. It's okay. Just, was, and then I want to go. There and now. then the the <laughs> the Bell House in um, Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. is another great place. It's a lot of independent shows, mm -hmm. but it's always like either up and coming or people who are working on their hour who are about to tape their special. Everybody goes there. Okay. Yeah. I've never been there. Yeah. I Bell go. House, Union Hall, always amazing shows. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, the last time you laughed out loud. The last time I laughed out loud. Like, well, like what made you laugh out loud? Oh, last laugh? night. Last night. It was my <laughs> friend Amina Amani. It was her birthday karaoke party and we had it at this place called Moe's and literally every comedian from all walks of life is coming and people are singing their hearts out, <laughs> singing, doing choreo. I mean, uh, my friend Alex was singing uh, um, Money Long, what's the, what's the song? Twin, where have you been? And yeah, I, yeah. I didn't even know the all of the words, the whole song. We just know that part. He's saying all of it and I, like, you could tell I was like, "Oh, you in love? You love this? this song. Who is this? This is for your man." Like, uh, <laughs> like it was just I was just laughing, like seeing people karaoke. You can't go wrong, but it's also best when people don't know how to sing and they're there for the vibes. For you the know, vibes, they're, like you're performing, and performing. You're performing poorly or good, mm -hmm. but it's just like it brings everybody together. Yeah, and so I just kept laughing at everyone just be tone deaf. Yeah. Don't know the words. <laughs> it's like we told you to pick that song. You don't know the words, right? Pick the song that you know you the know. words. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, favorite female comedian right now, and then male. Mm, favorite. That's hard. That's really hard. I don't, First I, person that comes to mind. Um. Oh. oh uh. Um. Uh. A male. Um. Is is two. Um, Mateo Lane, he's like one of my best friends and mm -hmm. he's so funny. And then uh, Caleb Heron, he's hilarious. I've never seen Caleb. He is so good. He's he's going to be here soon in, in New York. Okay. I think like June, June 9th. He's at the Bell House. Okay. I think it might be sold out, but I, f I feel like you got to go see him. He's so freaking good. Okay. W a woman, woman, woman. Damn, this this is so hard. Oh, uh, Yamanika Saunders mm -hmm. is hands down one of the funniest okay she's so like I've if never you seen see her, her live she's online a lot she mm -hmm. goes live mm -hmm. but she is like you're gonna have a good time okay and she's saying whatever she like she is that one of those people that it ain't about you what this is what <laughs> i think and you if you want to hear perspective she got it oh okay yeah and she's gonna have every take mm -hmm. she's telling you about every current event that's happening and her life yeah, and her either. cats Mm, and her yeah. cats. Mm, oh okay. yeah, no, she's got it all. Are we okay? Last yeah. question: 
Are we a dog lover now? <laughs> <clears throat> Let me clear my name, okay? <laughs> I love dogs. Okay. I love dogs. Okay. Am, can I take care of a dog per se? Maybe not. <laughs> I feel like dogs are high maintenance. Like you have they to, are. you have to have the will to get up. Mm-hmm. Top of the morning, mm-hmm. we walk in. Mm-hmm. Top of top of to middle of the day, we walk in. Mm-hmm. Late at night, we walk in. Mm-hmm. The dogs is getting fed more than than humans. <laughs> And then they got all this type of product. They got the clothes, shoes, collar. Like, you got to really jazz your dog up if you're going to get a dog. Like, oh, you're just going to go to the ASPC, ASP, ASPCA and get a dog and then that's it? That's no, 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 no. <laughs> it is it is a lifestyle when you have a dog. Yes. And you got to be ready. It's you and Bay. And I don't know. I'm not that. I'm not a person. But I love dogs. They're so cute. You love dogs. It's the people that's the problem. Oh, it's the the, the dog, owners. The owners are the problem. I got oh, you. you don't want everybody touching your. You got a cute ass dog. <laughs> your dog is looking at me like, oh yeah, I want to pitch your dog. You looking just like uncanny <laughs> valley into the to the to into the street. I, no, I'm not. I, no, I don't want to talk to you. Right. I want to talk to your Labradoodle. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Mm-hmm. He's, now you mad. You mad at everybody who keeps talking your dog. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's yours. And then and then you want your dog everywhere? Everywhere. Everywhere. Your dog is everywhere? Everywhere. 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 It, and then when I see the dogs in first class, I'm mad. Because the dog the dog doing better than me. <laughs> I'm, mad, I'm mad the dog is doing better than the, the dog. Legs all out. It's getting it's getting the filet mignon or the like rigatoni. Yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad. And then and then the dogs, the dog, the dogs, the people who got the dogs, and they just you don't know how to take care of your dog. The dogs that got the crust in the eye, I can't. I just yeah. can't. I, it's the people. It's the people. It's not the dog's fault. It's it's because you, you have to take care of the dog. You got to take care of the dog. So if the dog look crazy. It's because you got you, the dog yeah, out here looking yeah. crazy. Got and you. then and then you the dog is everywhere. All over the place. The dog is is on me. The hair everywhere. Mm-mm. I wish you met Nyla. Your my your, dog. I didn't bring her. Your dog. I I'm looking at you. I already know your dog gonna act right. This is the true. dog is the look. This is it's the vibe, and yeah. it's probably gonna look at me and be like, "Let me, what you wearing today?" Mm-hmm. And like, <laughs> and then like come up to me, like, "Hey, girl, like you got your dog has personality." Yes, she does. You know what too mean? Much like, of, too I, much of it. No, I love that. Mm-hmm. I, I am a dog person. Mm-hmm. But I, my person, cat, cat, we you, sleeping. You like cats. We sleeping, we yeah. judging, yeah. we not moving. Yep. That's me. Yep. I I am a personable person and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm an extrovert. Mm-hmm. But at the core, at the core, I'm a cat. I'm a cat. I'm a cat. Girl, feed me when you feed me. Mm-hmm. I, we could, I could get fed twice. I lick myself. I clean I lick myself. My, I'm, I'm good. Clean myself. Yeah, I'm good. We, you know, the cats are latchkey kids. Like yeah. they, they can figure it out. They figure it out. They dogs. Ugh. They need you. They needy. need. They so need. Cats are like, I'm gonna cuddle with you, and then mm, I'm gonna go do my own it. thing. Yeah, yeah. I, cats <laughs> do their own thing, and then if you got two I cats, like cats and they bother each other, they not bothering you. Yeah, the cats are just. They don't need sweaters, like no. or bows. The cat is what the cat is. Like dogs, you gotta you gotta put the accessories on it. Some of them, it's just I'm gonna have to put a hat on the dog. You rescue the dog, the dog look like it's rescued. So cats, cats are just like purr, 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 purr. You say purr because cats is purr, purr. Yeah, I'm that girl. Yeah, okay. Unless it's hairless, I can't do a hairless cat. You can't do a hairless cat. Uh- it looks like a scrotum. Get it out of here. <laughs> Get it out of here. This scrotum with eyes. Nah. It's scaring me. I can't eat. I can't eat. I can't sleep. You're a hairless cat. And they're just looking. And they want you to pet it. Get it a coat. Get it a sweater. The hairless cat needs a coat. And it needs shoes. Because it's like you could hear it like tap. Mm-mm. No, no, no. No offense. I like cats. But the hairless ones the cat. are Get- yeah. Give it a hoodie. Give it a hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, listen, you are so fun. This is so great. I was 45 minutes late, y'all. We I have to say it at the end of the show. I was so late. I thought we were supposed to be here at 1130. And that meant that's a 20 minute grace period if it's 1130. So I, I but it was an 11, 11 a.m. that I asked. I asked to come at 11. I asked to come at 11. And I was like, no, I thought it was 1130. And then I was 45 minutes late. Okay. So I had to make up. 
You I had to make up. Cut it up. Cut we're it up. Here. Do we're whatever here. you need to do. Yep, we're I here. hope I gave you. You gave me all of it. Okay. You gave me all of it. You okay. did. You did. Woo. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. Um, Where do you perform the most in New York? I'm at the stand on the weekends, mm -hmm. uh, on Friday, Saturdays. Mm -hmm. I'm on most of these shows. So come see me there. Yep. Um, I don't know when this is com coming out, but I'll be in, you know, places. I'll be at the DC Improv in October. Like, I'll be there for a weekend. Oh, fine. But also August, I'll be there um, featuring for my friend Rosebud Baker. Okay, so, good. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, thank you. Tell everybody your socials and where to follow you. Um, I'm on Instagram. Just Sid, B-W-J-U-S-T-S-Y-D-B-W. I'm on TikTok. It's a work in progress. I don't really promote it, but... If you go on my Instagram, you will find wherever else I need to be. Yep. That's that's the that's the main page. Yep. yep. And her stories are hilarious. Yes. Her sto I follow along yes. with your stories. Your something stories. is always happening. Yeah, something's always happening. She's making a whole moment of it. It's a moment. And um If I, I didn't lose anything, did I am I even present? Are we ever alive? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like we're losing something, we're walking somewhere, someone's yeah. saying something to us, Some, someone's some yelling crazy. at us. They try we're me. in a car, we're in a track. We're yeah. in a train. <laughs> Your train yeah. thing was hilarious yeah, too. Yeah, it's everything is always happening to me. Always. Yeah. So thank you so much for coming on. Um and to our listeners, thank you. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us. And I hope that you go get some laughter in your life. Peace. Go figure and and making I think the biggest gem is like there is laughter in every scenario. Just like they say you can look at something as a positive or a negative, you can also find what's just it's like fun. it's like they say God we make plans and God laughs. Ooh. Right? Amen. So it's like mm, you know, there's always something to laugh about. Yes. Um, so I hope you guys find the laughter in your life. Uh, it, it's whatever's happening. It may suck right now, but trust me, in a few weeks, months, years, you're going to laugh about it. Um, I will see you guys next week. And thank you again for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Hidden Gems with me, your host, Natasha Parker. Don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. It really helps grow our budding community. Follow me on IG at Natasha Parker and the show at Gems with Natasha. Hidden Gems with Natasha Parker is produced by Gotham Production Studios.